Welcome back to David's Been Here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about another passion of mine, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ever since I was a kid, I've been addicted to Marvel Comics, and that brings me to Miss Marvel on Disney+. Plus. Miss Marvel follows the adventures of Kamala Khan, a Pakistani-American teenager who learns that she has extraordinary abilities. The show takes her from her home in Jersey City to Karachi, Pakistan, as she learns more about her family's mysterious past and how it ties into one of the worst refugee crises in history. Of course, you can't accurately portray a Pakistani-American family without showcasing the foods they eat. And that's what this episode is all about. I had the incredible pleasure to explore Pakistan in 2021, and I ate my way through seven incredible cities, documenting my journey along the way. Let's dive into the food of Miss Marvel, as well as some other Pakistani foods I'm sure Kamala and her family would enjoy eating. Please keep in mind that I'll be discussing some light spoilers for Miss Marvel in this video. So if you haven't watched Miss Marvel on Disney Plus, go watch it now. First up, we're jumping straight into episode one of Miss Marvel, Generation Y. In the scene where Kamala goes shopping with her mother in Jersey City, we get a brief glimpse of her eating barfi, a popular sweet made from condensed milk, sugar, and a clarified butter called ghee. Sometimes other ingredients like saffron, cardamom, and almonds are added. After condensing the milk for hours, it's left to cool and thicken into a dense sweet fudge. Barfi is one of many South Asian sweets I tried during my time in Karachi. One of the more popular places to try it in town is Sony Sweet and Bakery, a shop in the Clifton area that sells dozens of sweets from the region, including Kalakand, Halwa, and Rasgulla. Their barfi is smooth and decadent with a burst of sweetness and a really nice nuttiness. But you also won't want to miss their herbal and floral baklava, as well as their rasgula, which is essentially a sweet ball of cottage cheese that's soaked in sugar syrup. Not so sweet. A little bit of sugar. Nice and dense. Another extremely popular dish Kamala tried in Miss Marvel is Pani Puri, a dish that goes by several names, including Galgapa, Puchka, and Fuchka. If you're unfamiliar with pani puri, it consists of a crispy, hollow ball of fried dough that's filled with a mix of potatoes, chickpeas, vegetables, herbs, chutneys, and a spice-filled water called pani. In episode 4, Seeing Red, Kamala tries a version of this dish that's way too spicy for her after arriving in Karachi with her mother, Muniba. I've eaten pani puri in both Pakistan and India, and I've had many different variations. There are some versions like the ones I ate in Jorha, India, which are so spicy that they had my entire mouth and throat on fire. Other versions, like the kinds I tried in Lahore, Pakistan, were sweet and filled with fruit and yogurt. But most of the Pani Puris are pretty mild. When I visited Karachi, my guides Furkan and Shiroz did a Pani Puri eating challenge with me where we tried to take down as many as we could. Check out the full video on my channel to see who won. And this, right? Yeah. It's so much thicker, right? Mm -hmm. Big pani. I can't <laughs> believe he's still going on. I know, I know, he's still going for the gold. He doesn't like... look like he's gonna stop anytime soon. Another dish Kamala ate in episode four, Seeing Red, is biryani. Biryani is an extremely popular layered rice dish and has tons of regional variations throughout South Asia and the Middle East. It typically takes hours to prepare and often contains fried onions, nuts, vegetables, and spices like garam masala, coriander, garlic, and saffron. You can also add animal proteins like egg, chicken, mutton, buffalo, fish, and even crab. In the episode, Kamala meets up with Kareem and his friends on the beach, likely Clifton Beach, where they eat biryani out of plastic bag. After dealing with a fiery version of pani puri earlier in the day, Kamala is a little hesitant to try it and even asked if it's spicy, which Kareem and his friends find hilarious. While I've never had biryani out of a bag, I've eaten many versions of it throughout India and Pakistan. In Karachi, the city where Kamala's family is from, I had both beef sin biryani and chicken sin biryani the traditional way at Biryani Wala in the Clifton neighborhood. By traditional, I mean, of course, you eat it with your hands. That's right, like most South Asian foods, this dish is meant to be eaten with your fingers rather than a fork or a spoon. The mix of masalas or spices and the addition of potatoes and a creamy yogurt dish called raita made it one of my favorite biryanis ever. He was telling me, here's a mood changer, right? Mm. If you're not in a good mood, eat biryani. In episode five, 
titled Time and Again. We spent a good chunk of the episode following Aisha, Kamala's great-grandmother, as she attempts to hide from both the British and the clandestines, starts a family, and escapes from India to Pakistan during the partition in 1947. When Aisha arrives in a small village and sleeps in a stranger's garden, the stranger, a man named Hassan, invites her into his home and offers her some mango, the national fruit of India, and some fresh paratas. Paratas are flaky, unleavened flatbread that are staples in South Asian cuisine. They're made with wheat flour and are eaten with a number of South Asian dishes, including dal, vegetables, and meat. On my first morning in Karachi, I met a man known as the King of Paratas, who spends his day pan-frying hundreds of these flaky, golden brown flatbreads at Cueta Alamgir Hotel. His paratas didn't come with mango. Instead, he served them with a vegetable omelet and a chickpea curry called chana. To eat it, you tear off pieces of parata using your right hand only, and then use the parata to grab bits of chana and omelet. It's a savory combination you can't beat. That's nicer. Good combination. Because Kamala's family is from Karachi, I want to dive into some other dishes that she and her family would probably enjoy. They didn't eat these dishes on the show, but they're all popular dishes you can find throughout the city. First up, let's talk about a very common breakfast item you'll find all over Pakistan, halva puri. It consists of a fried flatbread called a puri, along with potatoes or aloo, chana, which are chickpeas, a pickled dish called achar, and a sweet dish made from semolina flour called halva. Halva puri is so common in Karachi that you'll probably come across it without even trying. But my favorite place to have it was Dilpasan Sweets. Like the paratas and the chana, you use the puri as the vehicle to transfer the other dishes to your mouth. I suggest trying everything separately first, and then mixing and matching to see which combinations you like the best. The halva alone is unreal. Halva puri, oh man, this is super flaky. Super light, soft. So first thing you do is try with the halva, right? Mm. Nice contrast. Have a sweet. Mm. Nice sugar. And this is more dry, oily. This food is great though. Whoa, the halva? Another dish I think could be a favorite in the Khan household is a local favorite called halim. This dish is essentially a thick, pasty stew made from meat, lentils, and grains, and has many variations throughout South Asia and the Middle East. In Karachi, I suggest heading over to Karachi Halim on Burns Road to enjoy at least a couple of varieties. The Halim comes with naan and a platter of mint, fried onions, chilies, and lemon wedges, all of which you can add to the Halim to make it even tastier. Now the best way to eat this is not with a spoon. It's a traditional way, right? Traditional way is with some bread. Mmm, tasty naan. Oh, I love it. Not too thin, not too thick, fluffy. The weather in Karachi is scorching hot, so it's natural that you'd look for something cool and refreshing to beat the heat. I'm sure if Kamala had continued exploring the streets of Karachi, you know, before the clandestines chased her all over the city, she would have come across a vendor selling one of my favorite dishes, Dahi Barai. This dish is also known as Dahi Bala, or dahi vada, and is made up of crispy, fried lentil balls served in sweet yogurt. When I visited Fresco Sweets on Burns Road, I found a guy selling this dish out of a massive vat. The lentil balls and crispy fried dough give the dish a really nice crunch, but the cool creamy yogurt is a game changer, especially on a super hot day. Love the lentil ball. Yeah. Nice and dense, so it's a chat sweet, so it's like more of a street food. Sweet, right? One of the best dishes you'll find in all of Pakistan is a savory, velvety beef stew called Nihari. I'm almost positive that Kamala and her family love this dish, as it's incredibly popular and is one of the tastiest things I've ever eaten in my life. For this dish, I suggest heading over to Jivad Nihari on Dastagir Road. The heavenly aroma of the slow-cooked meat and umami-rich spices will hit you long before you get there. Nihari consists of tender beef, bone marrow, and sometimes beef brains in a thick, rich, and oily stew that also contains garlic, green chilies, and other spices. Like with halim, you eat it with freshly baked naan. Just tear off pieces of naan with your right hand, dip it into the nihari, grab a bit of beef, and just go to town. One of the ultimate breakfasts of all time. Beef stew. 
And for our last dish, we're gonna switch it up and go with something I doubt Kamala's mother would ever let her try, fire pond. This mind-blowing dish was invented in India fairly recently, but has since become popular throughout South Asia. But first, a little background on the dish itself. Fire pond is a variation of pond, a common South Asian street food that usually consists of nuts, spices, berries, seeds, and sometimes even tobacco or chocolate that is wrapped in a beetle leaf and chewed. It's used as a stimulant, a breath freshener, and a palate cleanser, and is said to be a digestive aid. Usually, the strangest thing about pond is that it temporarily turns your tongue and saliva bright red. But fire pond is way more extreme. With fire pond, the vendor lights the mixture inside the leaf on fire, and then shoves the entire leaf, flame and all, into the customer's open mouth. It's a wild sensation. The flame goes out the moment it enters your mouth and you're left with a smoky, nutty, and sweet flavor that's unlike anything else. It also gives you a jolt of energy. I've tried Fire Pond in Delhi and Bangalore in India, and Karachi is just the latest city where this flaming treat has called my name. Probably not something an overprotective parent like Muniba would want her daughter trying, but if you're brave enough, I say go for it. He added ice, it was really cold. Smoke. So you put it in your mouth, you feel the smoke go through. Wow, that's incredible. And that's it. Those are the Pakistani dishes that Kamala and her family enjoyed in the first season of Miss Marvel, as well as a few other dishes I have a good feeling they'd also like. I hope you enjoyed exploring Pakistani cuisine and the food of Miss Marvel season one on Disney Plus. Guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content, and I'll see you next year in the Marvels. Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, let's go. Kamala Khan.